Well, hello, hello. We are on day number 25 of Glenn Beck's 40 days and uh, uh, just kind of marching on through these things. So here we go. Uh, again, I am not affiliated with the Blaze or Glenn Beck or anything like that. I'm just a guy with a microphone and a camera and just kind of walking through these things. I thought, I thought to myself, what could I do? I need to, you know, I like to put some stuff up here on my, my channel kind of on a daily basis. I did some other, was doing other news kind of things, but I kind of thought that this should take precedence and kind of take over uh, for a little while while they're going on. And there's a few other things maybe stuck in there. Uh, so, uh, but as as always, remember to you know, do the YouTube things, right? Like and share the uh, the videos and subscribe to the channel so you get the rest of them. We can walk through all the rest of them. Okay. And I do do these uh, kind of, just off the cuff, I don't do any real deep dive preparation or anything or dig into them, you know, beforehand and preparing because we're kind of doing these every day. I want to come at it fresh and just kind of see where it leads me and where my thoughts come out, you know, in kind of a live kind of fashion. Okay, day number 25. Okay. But the second generation of humankind, by the second generation of humankind, murder made its first appearance. Yes, it did. Uh, Genesis 4, 7. If you're doing what is good, shouldn't you hold your head high? And if you don't do what is good, sin is crouching at the door. It wants you, but you can rule over it. Uh, sin is a lifelong bounty hunter seeking your life. Uh, the moment you forget that fact is a moment that sin overtakes you. Uh, it's uh, like a roaring lion. Seeking to devour, right? I mean, that's, that's, the Bible tells us that. So what does that mean? We spend our days fixated on sin. The opposite. We must spend our days fixated on obedience. The second law of thermodynamics is that all things tend towards maximum disorder. Yes, look at any uh, young child's room, and that will prove that right away. Uh, we don't have to work to make our homes messy. The mess always comes. The same is true of our lives. The mess always comes. We don't need to focus on keeping everything clean. That's where we exert our energy. But we do need to focus on keeping everything clean. God told Cain he could master the sin crouching at his door. But how? Well, Jesus' life shows us the answer. Okay, Matthew 4, 1 through 11. When Satan, the embodiment of sin, approached Jesus... He first offered Jesus food. This is probably the initial temptations of God in the wilderness. This is in Matthew 4. Uh, food is a fleshly desire. Fasting from food, as Jesus was, puts our flesh and our spirit on a tug of war. If you have ever fasted, then you know the strength of your own fleshly desires can be and feel overpowering. I need to make that suggestion on our, our church. We used to do it one church many churches ago. Uh, we used to sign up for one month. Uh, everybody would in the church would pick a day, right? And we would all fast. Whoever, what day you, have, you pick, you would, you would fast on that day. So it was a very simple thing. One day, you know, and, and then some, that way all of the days of the month would get covered. And then we would have a whole month of fasting. So, and, and it, I mean, right, they, it was sensitive. Like if you had health problems that you could not eat, you know, you needed to be able to eat, like diabetics and things like that, that they would you know, maybe maybe take something else out. Like today, you know, probably a good fasting would be, you know, not all day sitting on this thing would be a good, you know, e-fast, right? <laughs> so, okay. If Galatians five seventeen for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposite to each other and keep you from doing the things you want to do. There are many fleshly desires, food, sex, success. These are not evil desires because of their power. They have to be properly regulated. God gives us food, but if the flesh overpowers the spirit, we become gluttonous. God created sex, but the temperance of the spirit, sex can quickly over become sexual immorality. God is asking us to strike the balance. After 40 days without food, Jesus was hungry. He was experiencing fleshly desires. He was vulnerable, just like us, to temptation, but unlike Cain, he mastered it. 
He turned to the devil and quoted Deuteronomy 8.3 using the scripture as a weapon. He met temptation with truth. That's very important to get scripture in, in your mind as we go through these things. Sometimes I'll, you know, bring up different scriptures and things that I, that I know, and that's very important. Um, especially in that, like in the early church, they didn't have like a book like we have, or, you know, I mean, I have a tablet here that you know, has, has, you know, the Bible, it has commentary, it has all my notes, you know, all these different things, you know, they didn't have that back then. So it was very difficult. Sometimes you would only get like part of a, you know, one letter from John would might be all that you had. And then you would take that and, you know, move that around, you know, in a neighborhood, you know, kind of thing and share it. So very, very different from today. All right. So if you can get it to memory, then that's much, much better. Okay. But the adversary was crafty. He also knew the scripture and recited Psalms to Jesus in an attempt to convince him to literally jump off a cliff. But Jesus not only knew the verse, he also knew what that meant. He knew the character of God. In his final attempt, Satan offered all the kingdoms of the world. Jesus turned him down flat. Finally, Satan left in defeat. After all this, the angels came to care for Jesus. Until that point, he had to do it on his own. But then, after he overcame his flesh with his spirit, heavenly help came. Yes, yeah, so we have to be aware. You know, it's, it's very important to know that Satan knows the scripture better than you do. He knows it and he can twist it, right? He can take verses and say, well, this might mean this, or add a few words here or something there, you know, when you're, you know, things are going, when people are hitting you with different things, it's best to have your own translation that you know, that you, you know, been with for years and been used in the church and, and everything else that you know. I typically use New American Standard for things. So a lot of churches use like NIV and just make sure that any verses that, you know, people give you, or post on you know social media or anything take those and take them back to your own bible and see what they say and make sure that what they're saying in that is correct that's called being berean the bereans were in the biblical days of just a very studious people they did all the research did all the you know checking okay does this match up with this does this did these two things match is this correct have we seen this before? What what would, did Paul say about this? What did Mark say about this? You know, all these things. And they would bring it all together to make sure that what they were hearing and seeing was really part of the Word of God. Okay. Every tactic Jesus took to overcome temptation is available to us. To master the sin crouching at your door, we need to know the Scripture. Not only that, we need to know them in their proper context. Okay, I'm reading ahead again <laughs> without reading ahead. Okay, we need to know so deeply that the patterns in the Bible reveal God's character to us. That way we are approached with sin loosely wrapped in Bible verses. We can see through the facade. So in this life, the battle between flesh and spirit rages on. This is by design. Do not succumb to the illusions that flesh of the desires can be eliminated. Do not think that sin has left your door. Rather, feed the spirit of knowledge of God. Rage against evil inclinations. Sin may be crouching at the door, but don't you don't have to let it in the house. Okay. Read the following passage out loud. Ephesians 6. Let's jump to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. 10. Okay, oh, okay. Yes, Ephesians. Arm of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, what are we reading? Through 18. A bit, up a little bit, up a little, okay, here we go. Have, okay, so we gotta go up. 
Having done all to stand firm, stand therefore having fastened the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and the shoes of your feet, having put on readiness given in the gospel of peace, in all circumstances take up the shield of faith, which can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert, all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that the words given to me in my opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, which I am in ambassador in chains, and I may declare it boldly as I ought. So this is definitely speaking, you know, about the the armor of God, right? What I was saying, you know, they. We need to take all these pieces, which and that's memorizing scripture, getting scripture in your head and chewing on it over and over again, being able to speak it and know it. I mean, even if you don't know the exact verse from where it's from, you know, at least get those words and concepts in your head. Uh, just do that. And that will help you. Okay, so we are done. So memorize at least one verse. Speak what you've memorized out loud. If you speak to a friend or family member. So that's good. I'm reiterating all the things that I was saying as I was going. Hmm. All right, so that's number 25. So then uh, I think I just got the next five. So then we can continue on with that. I'll do some more tomorrow and keep going. All right, thanks everybody for watching and uh, following along with me. And uh, as always, God bless.